Drink responsibly, kids. Happy Halloween! Hey guys, Woo. yeah! Spooky. We've gotten ourselves a whole bunch of Baltica. Mm -hmm. uh, I smuggled in some uh, illegal alcoholic energy drinks from Canada. Mm -hmm. Some and contra contraband. Contra and, and in honor of this contraband, we're going to play Clock Tower. Clock Tower. This game was released 1995. It is a horror, adventure, survival, sort of Jennifer Connelly style game. I was so 10. It, and as a special treat, we're gonna rock the Wonder Swan version. Oh. So, this game was released in 1995. It was only for the Super Famicom, at least to start off with. It was a weird sort of survival horror game, but like not like Resident Evil where there's zombies and those sort of things, Ooh. but also kind of similar. And in an actual really bizarre observation, the game came out in 1995, but only just now did it actually finish spelling out the title of the game. <laughs> <laughs> it takes its time. Yeah. It does. What is the story? What do we think about it? Our crew of orphans has been taken to this new mansion to start a new life by our matron, Ms. Mary. She does uh, have a bit of the Jennifer Connelly gum. Yeah. There. Ms. Mary, what is it like to be in love. Well, it's like having a cock tower inside of you. <laughs> I have Charming. found that I have been developing. She goes off to do some stuff, never comes back. I go to find her, everyone you else as disappears. As in Jennifer. Me as in mm. Jennifer. Sweet, sexy, sexy Jennifer. Jennifer. No butt Jennifer. No bottom. No ass. <gasps> there we go. Oh boy. We explore the mansion and we discover this scissor wielding weirdo mm -hmm. who has murdered two of our friends, often involving water for some strange yeah. reason. Yes. Yeah. Take a shit. Take a shit. Uh, what do you what do you want to bet when you pull that curtain open something's gonna be behind it? I a big shit. Lau? Ra? Ra? Laura. Oh, That's shit. cool. <laughs> so in this game, you can't really fight the scissor man. You can kind of like briefly push on the scissors and defend yourself, but basically you just need to hide. Running and hiding is the only thing you can really do. So you need to get your ass out of this room. I'm trying. Or and into murdered. another room. I yeah. was trying and I didn't do it. I kind of have to figure out like, why am I here? What is going on? How do we stop this? Can I save any of my friends? It's a real mm. existential or crisis. Or should we just <laughs> find the car ASAP and, and just go? Out? <laughs> <laughs> just go. Yeah. If what I looked at on the internet is accurate, this will get us the worst ending of the game. I can get out of here <laughs> with this car, but the others. F the no, others. Be F a bad them. person. Do it. Just go. Do it again. Just keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care about my friends. I want to live. I want to live. What, what should, should I, do? I do? You should drive the car drive out away. Of here. Forget your friends. They're just a bunch of orphans. No one cares about them anyways. Oh there yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> for she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. And she hates her friends. That's right. And is there this... is clearly a connection as we found our father in a side room just rotting, dead. Just rotting away. I don't know why she's still picking. I mean, you don't pick up a corpse like that. I mean, it's weird. But no, let's reenact. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> that I wouldn't... is a. Uh... I wouldn't touch it. And not only we're finding, you know, discovering what's happening, but we're also discovering ourselves as a young woman mm -hmm. and learning about our body yep. and, what no but. and what it's capable of in terms of anime frames of animation <laughs> what, what do we think about the story like does it, does it function for this type of game i think it's a We're decent sorry. vehicle for a horror game it's creepy enough because yeah. you kind of don't know what's going on yeah, you, you don't know anything. as it goes which is fun i i i think for uh, a girl uh, getting lost in the post-electro holocaust of the cyber future there was not nearly enough technology in this game. That's fair enough. I mean, yeah. that's true. The that, switches be, don't even work. The switches don't even broken. work. Kind of transitioning from that into graphics and presentation. Mm -hmm. It is a horror game 
on the Super Nintendo. So obviously you're not going to get like the 3D first person, holy crap, something jumps out yeah. in front of you. But how do you think that this game does in terms of graphics and presentation? I don't know. I've seen a better graphics out of the Super Nintendo. I think it yeah. could have done a little better, but it did all right. It looks okay. Yeah. I would have liked to see the paintings a little closer when you hmm. interact with it. Zoom in, say, "Oh, this is what it looks like." And it did that sometimes, like sometimes. with the dad, it for example. Very, yeah, <laughs> very selective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I, I think that the graphics were very good. I think, I think it looked good, but they could have done a couple extra things. I, I just, mm. I feel like all of the rooms were clear. You knew what sort of room you were in, mm -hmm. but the hallways it was easy yes. extremely easy to get yeah, lost that's in right. yes. they, the only a few of them were unique that just drove me nuts that it was just like i was like when i saw like oh, okay this is green this is blue this is purple all right mm -hmm. but then it was like vast vast areas were green blue purple mm -hmm. like and then both upstairs and downstairs, there wasn't like a wings coating or anything like that to set it off. So like, in the presentation, they could have used like a map or something to differentiate a little a bit map, more. Basically. A map or would have been huge. stylistic. Yeah. A map would have been amazing. Though. Right, like have wings coating on the first floor, just a chair rail on the second. It'd be nice. <laughs> and it could have been a map <laughs> that like, tips. populates as you explore the mansion, so yeah, you that don't would be just cool. have yeah. everything all at Already. once. In this game, you're kind of meandering around. There's not much music. It's very creepy. You just kind of hear footsteps. And then it kind of intelligently utilizes music only for when you're being chased. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like suddenly you, it goes from nothing to just clap, clap, clap. Is there something going to happen? And then, holy crap, like the scissor man is coming after you and the music's playing. And you're like, holy shit, I need to get out of here. And then finally, it slowly calms down again. And I think that overall, the music works. Mm. I wouldn't mind something a little, little ambient for when the Scissor Man isn't chasing you, though. I would like a little bit more of a transition, but I do think that they do a good job of contrasting the two yes. states. Things Maybe going, even just something you know, that, like, built with her, like, emotional level. Sure, yeah. Because that's something I feel like I missed out on. Like, we played almost all of the game in her red zone. Yeah. yeah, and I never felt any well, psychological well, terror when we were not being chased by it the was Scissor Man. Her time of the month. Her time of the month. <laughs> God, this review is really, really sexist. But that's okay. I mean, like ninety-eight percent of our viewer base is guys. Mm -hmm. You know. Now we can have the the, the viewer statistic. Go, Woo! <laughs> the slide like, whistle. Yeah, exactly. Gameplay itself, like one of the things that I was, you know, deb always debating on regarding this game is master it, debating. Master debating was. Did it function better as a point-and-click-esque game, which is kind of what the interface was like, or would it have been better if you could just freely control Jennifer Connelly? Oh, no, no, it's, it's going, it's going. We're going in here, we're going in here. No, girl, no, girl! I don't think it would have been bad as a point-and-click game if we had a mouse. Yeah. Okay. With the D-pad, I wasn't loving it. Yeah. I just felt like it was too hard to, even though the cursor did lock on to key objects, getting it to actually get to that lock point was still more of a chore than it was. It was difficult, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't yeah. like difficult in a meaningful way, it was just clunky. Yeah. I mean, I guess when the Scissor Man is, 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 you know, when Bobby or whatever his name is, is running after you, like. I mean, it kind of helps to be like, okay, I have this brief moment where I can lock onto something and she'll do this animation where she can escape. Oh, boy. She's I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what is this bullshit? Versus, I guess, if it was more free roaming, maybe... You could have made it there. You, Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm not exactly sure how it would have worked, but... I do think it was cool that they limited your choices when you were being chased by Bobby. Like, you couldn't You just... couldn't go investigate a book. You right. know, like, it's like, oh, yeah. well, let me read that, this. That was probably so that you wouldn't accidentally click those things. You wouldn't be like... <laughs> 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 oh, is that... Well, oh, like there's scissors in my ass and again! Then, you know, it just, yeah. just get murdered. It was probably yeah. limiting your choices to things that would actually benefit you. What do we think about this game, Clock Tower, for the Super Famicom? I'm not exactly... What do we, what do we think about this game? Come on in here. Get in tight, Get in friend. here. What do we think about this game, Clock Tower, Super Famicom, the Halloween episode? Go ahead. I'm not the biggest survival horror person, mm -hmm. so I can't really say how it stacks up to the Resident Evil and Silent Hills of the world. But I would still say that this game is a solid, like, 
Seven and a half. I okay. I enjoyed what I was playing. I wanted to figure out where the story was going. I was interested in what was happening. And I don't want to give any lower than that because I don't want to be yelled at by all the people that have uh, developed a cult following for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. say F you to all of them. It's a six. Oh! oh! I am also going to go with a six just because it had a lot of clunkiness and I don't think it's aged terribly well. Mm -hmm. But it has some fun in it. So, yep. I mean... So in the meantime, have a very happy Halloween. Spooky. And October and pumpkin spice. We're going to be rocking the Wonder Swan version next and doing a review of that Boy. and see, seeing how it holds Yay. up. The pumpkin spice Wonder Swan. To the Super Famicom version. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Cheers to you. Happy Hanukkah. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more H4G game reviews, don't forget to subscribe to see new episodes every week. And for those interested, we have just started a brand new Patreon page. Definitely check it out. We're working on some great perks and rewards for you guys. Links are in the description below.